we've always been of the mentality that to have the most effective change on the ground, uh, you need a lot of different stakeholders involved. And so we bring together human rights groups and NGOs, investors, as well as brands and retailers. So I feel like having corporate contribution to, uh, to success, to change, uh, will make the whole process actually go a lot faster because money talks. As you know, the Uzbek government is very much interested in increasing the flow of investment from this, from this country, from the United States. And many members of this uh, coalition of the Cotting Campaign are businesses who have refused to use anything that had um, Uzbek cotton in it. Now that there is some change in Uzbekistan, how has the attitude changed within the, within the cotton campaign? What are the debates like? Well, there's definitely a discussion and a question from brands about the changes that have happened, especially with a lot of messaging coming out of either the Uzbek government or other international institutions about the success. And we acknowledge the successes, the fact that the vo most vulnerable children are no longer in the fields is a huge success. Uh, with that said, forced labor does still exist. We have to acknowledge that it exists and that it's going to take several years to change. And so my message to the brands is that we are making a difference. Change has started to occur, but that we need to keep up the drumbeat so that mm -hmm. all the changes that we want to see will happen. So the pledge isn't changing yet? Uh, we've made a few adjustments to the pledge over time. Uh, originally, our, our focus was on forced child labor in the cotton fields, and we changed it to forced labor of adults and children, or, and now it's just forced labor. Uh, the other change that I'd say has occurred is having additional assurances besides the ILO in determining when forced labor has ended. And that's a change that we are proposing just now and making sure that the signatories are in agreement with that change before we actually make it. We know um, that the Cotting campaign has been talking to the Uzbek government. Uh, there, are, there are discussions about the members of the Cotting campaign um, to travel to, uh, to Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. And what we hear from the Uzbeks is that we need to hear doable, uh, acceptable proposals from the campaign. Like we, we get them, we get their goal, we understand their mission, uh, we're willing to listen to them, but unless they give us something that we can work with, something that fits our reform agenda, we can't work mm -hmm. with them. Well, there's always a difference of opinion as to how to get to the end goal. I think what is important is that we all agree on what that end goal is of of no longer having forced labor in Uzbekistan. So how do we get there? I think that the cotton campaign can make recommendations and a roadmap and achievements that we'd like to see over the next couple of years. But I also think it's up to the Uzbek government themselves to lay out the detail of how that type of plan will be implemented. It's not our job to create an entire roadmap for them. We can talk about what we'd like to see, how we can see improvement over the years, and then, uh, but, but leave it up to the government to actually come up with the detail because we're not privy to all of their agencies and the interworkings of their government. One thing that I am very pleased about and would like to mention is the success of the pledge. We launched it in 2011. We launched it after several brands had already made commitments to no longer source any Uzbek cotton. We wanted to bring all those commitments together in one place to send a message to the Uzbek government, to the farmers on the ground, to the world that forced labor is unacceptable. So I'm happy to say after 10 years, and it has been quite a lot of work, that the pledge has been effective. 
I've gone to visit yarn spinners in various countries, including Bangladesh, and none of them had his bed cotton and had actually uh, reference the fact that they know they're not supposed to use any Uzbek cotton. I've spoken with cotton traders who said that uh, nobody is uh, trading, and actually I shouldn't say nobody, but that it's difficult to get a letter of credit to buy Uzbek cotton because it's not accepted by the industry. And we haven't done hard-hitting enforcement of the pledge. We give recommendations for next steps. Uh, and I'm happy to see that a lot of the brands did indeed send letters and messages or put into contracts with their suppliers not to use any Uzbek cotton. So although it's uh, somewhat of a soft uh, request, at the same time, uh, a lot of brands, it's their, uh, it's, it's their own brand on the line. It's their reputation as a company not to use any modern slavery in their supply chain and they want to make sure that indeed they're abiding by that pledge if they've put their name to it. So uh, with that I think it's a, an avenue that we could explore in the future for other countries such as Turkmenistan uh, and now what RSN is doing is we have launched a new um, standard called YES, Yarn Ethically and Sustainably Sourced. It models after the conflict minerals standard for the yarn spinners to ensure uh, that they are not indeed sourcing cotton harvested with forced labor, not just from Uzbekistan, but from any country, any high-risk country uh, that is known to have forced labor in its cotton industry. And it uh, aligns with the OECD due diligence approach, and it actually takes those concepts, those kind of somewhat lofty concepts, and puts them into reality so that brands and others and consumers know that no forced labor is going into the products that they're using. So when Uzbeks listen to this, some of them at least mm -hmm. may get upset that, you know, not using Uzbek cotton is really not good for us because cotton brings um, a major part of the national revenue and, uh, and we work very hard for it. So why are outside groups celebrating the fact that the Uzbek cotton is not being used? What would you say to them? We started the pledge and the information flowing to brands about what was happening because of a request from Uzbek people asking the international community to boycott Uzbek cotton. And so this wasn't something that we decided on our own. We were actually responding to a request from Uzbek people. Yes, they work very hard, but they also get paid very little uh, and actually don't get paid adequately to even cover the minimal costs of growing cotton. And so the question is, would you rather continue the exploitation and work hard under a system that exploits people? Or, although there may be uh, challenges in selling the Uzbek cotton today by taking a stand against exploitation and forced labor, there can be a better future. Mm -hmm.